Hello and welcome to the first video of Programming Workbook. In this video we are going to see a tool for detecting which student has copied his code from another student by using a tool called MOS. Firstly, let's understand what MOS is. The goal of this tool is to detect if two students have a very similar code by checking similar lines. It is a free tool for non-commercial use. If you need a commercial tool, I would suggest using another one, as this one doesn't seem to have advanced features. Ok, once we've understood what this tool is about, let's try to understand how it works. Firstly, you have to tell iScript which files or directories belong to your student's project. Then, this script will submit all these files to a Stanford server. Thus, here we get one conclusion, that we don't store any server into our machine, everything is done remotely. This server processes the files and, once it has the results, it returns a URL with the file comparison. Yes, you don't receive any file, you just receive a URL and there is you where your result is. Great! Now let's see it in practice. First step, download the MOS client script into your machine. Ok, now all we have to do is go into the MOS homepage. Uh, how do we do it? I mean, you can type its URL, of course, but as I'm a lazy person, I'm just going to search for it. So just go to your favorite search engine and write MOS. And of course, as you imagine, MOS is a very vague word, so it's, it won't return to you directly the page you want. So just write another word like Stanford. Perfect. Here we have it, the Stanford University, and this is the plagiarism detection, so this is the software we want. Perfect. Once it's open, all we have to do, we have to write an email for this email address. So we have to write an email to here. You don't need to write any subject if you don't want to. Okay. And the the content must be as is just say register user mail and your email address so you just have to use register as a user mail and your email address with a white space of course consider that uh, this is not going to be checked by a human being it's going to be checked by a machine so if anything is wrong here it's going to it, it's going to fail okay what's important here is that it's going to return to us a script with a user ID that's what is important to us so just go in my case of course I've already received this email so I don't have to send it and all you have to search is for the user ID user ID so in this case I have my user ID here, ok, so the next step is just copying all this stuff, all this script from here till this end, oh. just copy from here to the end. And paste into a file, ok. I'm going to call it mosnet.pl. Okay, so just open any any uh, uh, editor and paste it, and then you have your script there. Step two: organize your files. This is not a mandatory step, but if you don't do it frequently, your file system will be a huge mess in the future. Okay, now it's time to tidy up everything. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get the file we downloaded 
and I'm going to paste them together with the student projects. My student projects is in documents and here I have most examples. Inside of it I have like a few folders that we are going to use it very soon and I'm going to paste the file here. It's not mandatory pasting it here, you can place it anywhere you like, but I prefer leaving it here for this example. Okay, so just consider, of course, where the student projects are because you need the, the directories for working with them. Step 3. Time to press like and subscribe if you are enjoying this video. So I'm going to give to you 5 seconds to do it. Great. Step 4. Now it's time to see which options our script has. The first option we have is lowercase l and the language we are going to evaluate. For example, if it's Java, just write Java. Consider that due to that, MOS is able to detect things that are related to the language, like for example, rename variables and such things. The option dash D says that each student project is in a different directory. Otherwise, it will understand that each file belongs to a different student. Personally speaking, I always use dash D. Dash B is an option which can be repeated and is followed by a path for the base file used as a template. Some teachers give a boilerplate to students and of course, this shouldn't be considered a plagiarism. The option dash M followed by a number says the maximum number of times a given code may appear before being ignored. This is some kind of sensitiveness. And then we have dash C followed by a string, which is just a comment which will appear on the report. Last but not least, we have to set all the files with their directories to be submitted. Now that we have done everything, let's see how it works in practice. Here we have our directory, as you can see, here we have our script, the one we downloaded from our email, base which is supposed to be the boilerplate that the teacher has given to students. Uh, then we have three students projects here. All of them they have only one file. Okay, so Casper is supposed that you have done one project and then someone copied it. Of course, I just say copied here, but it's supposed to be a student name. And uh, of course, this copy is of course not a, a full copy. A few things were changed. And we have isolated, which is someone that did the project by his own. I mean, he, he hasn't copied from anybody and nobody has copied from him. Okay, perfect. So once we've understood that, we can go to, we can test our project. Okay, using the combination command shift U, you can go directly to the utilities folder, open the terminal, and then we can just take the, the full screen. After that, of course, let's increase the font size with Command Shift Plus. Uh, and now we can read it at least. I think that's important. Uh, then let's go to the Documents folder. Inside the Documents folder, we have the mouse examples, and here we have the, the same directory we had before. So what do we have to do? Just call Perl mosnet i mean or the file the way you've called it then we have to specify the language we are going to use in this case the projects were given in java so let's just write java let's use dash d as i said in this case wouldn't be really necessary as we have only one file in each folder however i prefer using it this way and of course differentiating projects according to uh, folders rather than according to files then we can use dash b to say which file 
it was used as a boilerplate so we can say base program okay if you have more files you have to use dash b and the other file as well and finally we can set which files of course belong to the students okay so in this case we have casper program we have copy program and isolated program and press enter great now we have received one one url which is this one where our result is okay if you have any issue here it's very likely to be that the user id is wrong okay so if you set a wrong user id sometimes it gives you weird errors something like waiting for server response and then it doesn't give you any any url at the end or it says that it could not submit the files now that's the last step all we have to do is go into the url and see what the report tells us about okay so now the last thing we have to do is go into the URL and check in what we've got. As we can see, Casper and Copy, they have like 91% of similarity, which means that, uh, of course, it's very likely that uh, it was a copied project. However, for example, if we compare Casper with isolated, copied with isolated, we don't have like a, this huge percentage. Uh, the percentage is still huge because, of course, the files I used they were just small ones, so of course a a part of it is quite difficult to to hide. I mean, it's it's difficult to be different. Um, let's select one of them and see how it works. As you can see here, it tells us, of course, that Casper has the file called program.java and this part, the green one, is similar to the green one here, which of course is not in the same place, it's just somewhere else. And the same thing happens with this blue one, which of course is here. And uh, the red one, of course, is very similar. Therefore, here are the lines which, of course, it considers that uh, these files are very similar. Have a look that uh, here we, I have a variable called game and here I have a variable called board. Even knowing that the variables are different, uh, I mean they have different names, it knows that it's the same variable which was just renamed. Okay, we've learned how to use this tool. However, there is one more advice I would like to give you. You have to know your tool. I mean, this tool, of course, it has uh, some pros and cons and uh, things that uh, they work fine and things that they don't. I would suggest playing with this tool and checking what kind of issues you might have. For example, does it detect if you change a for loop with a while loop, for example? Does it detect if you move a, your function to another file? So, all this kind of thing you'll only know with practice. So, good luck! Thank you very much for watching this video.